I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. This episode of Bodybuilding History is brought to you by the BodybuildingLegendShow.com. I'm your host, John Hansen, and on today's episode of Bodybuilding History, I'm going to talk to you about the 1968 NABBA Mr. Universe contest. Arnold Schwarzenegger won the pro division. Dennis Tinarino won the amateurs. And it was a great event, so let's get into it. All right, the 1968 NABBA Mr. Universe, of course, took place in London, England, the Napa Mr. Universe actually started in 1948 when John Grimmick beat out Steve Reeves. It was a very controversial decision. They did not have an event in 1949, and then NABBA started promoting the contest in 1950. So really, this was like the 20th anniversary of the Napa Mr. Universe. So we had an amateur division, and we had a pro division. They had 13 judges judging the event. The amateur division was broken up into a short class, a medium class, and a tall class. So the short class was won very narrowly by Wilfred Sylvester of England. Wilfred was a great bodybuilder. He had really good symmetry, great definition, good muscle mass. He would go on to win several other international titles in his career. He went over to the IFBB and he won the Mr. Universe contest twice, once in 1975 in the short class. And then in 1984, when he competed in a lightweight class. But Wilford really had his hands full tonight because he was up against Franco Colombo. Now, this was Franco's first NABBA Mr. Universe contest. Franco was from Italy, but of course, at the time, he was living in Munich, Germany, and he was training with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So this was his big first international contest, and he really pushed Will Sylvester. A lot of people thought Franco was going to win that contest. Franco eventually did win the most muscular award that night, so that goes to show you how impressive he was. In third place was a bodybuilder from Austria named Adolf Zigner. Adolf Zigner was huge. He was only five foot five, but he weighed 212 pounds with 20 inch arms. He had kind of a wide waist, but a very blocky, big bodybuilder. Not too many bodybuilders back then were that massive. In the medium class, a bodybuilder named Roy Perot from the United Kingdom took first place. This was Roy's eighth time trying to win the Mr. Universe, and he finally succeeded. He won first place in the medium class. Arthur Farnhurst, also from the UK, he was in second place. And Janko Rudman from Sweden was in third place. John DeCola from America was signed up to compete in this contest, but for some reason he didn't show up. John would go on to win the IFBB Mr. America in 1969, the next year, and John had a great physique. It's too bad he didn't show up at the NABBA Universe this year. But the real competition in the NABBA universe was in the tall class. You had two Mr. America winners battling it out for first place. You had 1968 Mr. America, that year's Mr. America, Jim Hayslop. Jim was a great bodybuilder. He was about 5'11", wide shoulders, small waist, big legs, great proportions, good-looking guy. He had a lot of promise and a lot of great genetics. So he was going up against Dennis Tenorino. Now, Dennis had won the Mr. America in 1967, the year before. And Dennis had traveled to London that same year when he won the Mr. America, but he took second place to Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Dennis came back this year, and in a really close decision with 13 judges, it was seven judges voting for Dennis, six judges voting for Jim Hayslop. It was a real close decision, but Dennis Tenorino wins first place in the tall class. Frank Richard, who had won the Mr. Britain contest, he, had, he was in third place. Frank was another great bodybuilder from Britain, real great structure, tall guy, real big, and he would go on to win this class in the future. Frank would go on to become actually a professional IFBB bodybuilder. And then in fourth place was Vic Downs from Canada. And Vic is another interesting story because he did not actually start bodybuilding until his 30s. So in 1968, Vic was about 39 years old, I believe. He was almost 40 and he was placing high in these international events. Incredible. So in the overall, you had Will Sylvester, Roy Perot from the UK, and Dennis Tenorino posing down for the overall. Dennis Tenorino was the obvious winner. He had great size, great frame, and uh, he was very popular with the audience. So Dennis Tenorino wins the overall at the 1968 NABBA Mr. Universe. All right, now we go over to the professional division, and they had two classes in the pro division. They had a short class and a tall class. 
there was 13 total competitors entered in the Nava Mr. Universe Pro Division. So there was a real battle in the short class between John Citroni from England and Freddie Ortiz from New York. So Freddie was a competitor in the IFBB, and for some reason he had switched in 1968, and he went over to compete in the Nava Universe, and he also competed in Dan Laurie's organization. So this was a really tough contest because Freddie was huge, huge arms. He had like 20 inch arms at five foot five, and he was really something to see. He had this great vacuum pose, but John Citroni was also a great bodybuilder, and he was really in great condition. He was very thick. So it came down to the wire, but John Citroni was the winner of the short class in the pro division. Now in the tall class, you had five competitors. And of course, the favorite going in was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold had won the amateur division the year before at only 20 years old. So now here he is at 21 years old, and he's coming back to win the pro contest. And Arnold was absolutely huge. If you read Arnold's book, Education of a Bodybuilder, there's a section in the book where Arnold talks about he was just training to be an animal. And he was training out in the woods and they were doing these barbarian style workouts with him and his partners. And they bring girls out into the woods and they train for like eight hours and they would just use one exercise and just do that exercise for like eight hours. So he was doing all kinds of crazy stuff to get as big as possible. So he competes in this contest at over 250 pounds, probably 10, 15 pounds heavier than he was the year before, but he really wasn't in top condition. He looked actually better in 1967. But as far as muscle mass goes, Arnold was probably the biggest bodybuilder in the world at this point. But he lacked a tan. He didn't have a tan at all. And he was just too smooth. And Arnold also made a mistake before going up on stage. When he was backstage, he was trying to psych out Freddie Ortiz because he heard about him from America. And he found that Freddie was drinking whiskey. So I think Freddie offered Arnold some whiskey and Arnold drank it. But he was drunk by the time he got out on stage. And they said when he was out on stage being judged, he was letting his stomach hang out and he looked like he was almost gonna fall over. He was wobbling. So I guess Arnold's training partners were yelling at him from the audience and then he finally straightened up and he did enough to win first place. But at that time, being super ripped wasn't as important and Arnold with his massive size was just too overwhelming for anyone else. Second place went to a bodybuilder called John Bubb. John would also compete in this contest in 1970 against Arnold and Reg Park and Dave Draper. Nicholas Kleber was in third place, and Jacques Louvier was in fourth place. He was from France. And then in the overall at the pro universe, it was actually pretty close because again, Arnold for all his size was really off condition and he wasn't in contest shape. And John Citroni really pushed him for that overall title, but eventually Arnold Schwarzenegger was the winner of the 1968 pro Mr. Universe. Dennis Tenorino was the winner of the amateur division. I got hold of the contest program that was from 1968 and the Mr. Universe contest. So this is really pretty interesting. Let's take a look at some of these facts and figures. In the short class, you could see Franco, 26 years old. They got him listed at five foot five, only 176 pounds. And then they got everybody's measurements here. I don't know if they took the measurements there at the contest. I'm guessing they probably just, the competitors just wrote them down themselves. So some of these guys might have been exaggerating. But then you can see Will Sylvester up at the top there and from St. Lucia, only 22 years of age, five foot three, 165 pounds. And then Adolf Zigner, who I was talking about, who got third place from Austria, 29 years old, five foot five, 218 pounds. And they got his upper arm measurement at 20 inches. And then if we go over to the uh, tall class, that was pretty interesting too, because you can see on the bottom there, Dennis Tinarino from the USA, 23 years old, six feet tall, 20 inch arms. They don't have his weight for some reason. But then Jim Hayslop, also from the USA, 26 years old, five foot 11 and a half, 220 pounds with 18 and a half inch arms and 27 inch legs. Jim had the biggest legs of the whole contest. And then finally, I want to look at the professional division here. We've got Arnold on the bottom there from Austria, 21 years old, six foot two, 254 pounds. So unfortunately, this page was cut off and I couldn't see the size of his arms but he claims his waist is 32. He doesn't have his thighs and he's got his calves at 19 inches. So uh, that's really interesting. And then if we go up a little bit, we could see John Citroni from England, 25 years old, five foot five, 180 pounds. And Freddie Ortiz from Puerto Rico, 28 years old, five foot six, 190 pounds. And damn, we don't have his arm development, but I'll bet Freddie's arms were at least 20 inches. That was really interesting to look at the program 
they had an official program every year at the Nava Universe and it listed all these guys, height, weight, and all their measurements. Now, before I end the program, I want to mention one other thing, which was the 1968 IFBB Mr. Universe, which took place one week after this Nava Universe contest. It was in Miami, Florida. And this was the famous contest where Frank Zane beat out Arnold Schwarzenegger. So from the reports I read, they said it really wasn't that professional of an event. Um, they had all the competitors come out in T-shirts wearing medallions. And from the story I heard from Jerry Branham, the medallions had a picture of a guy who looked just like Frank Zane. So Arnold thought the whole thing was a setup. But they had some great competitors in it. Roy Callender, who would become a future IFBB pro, he was competing in the event. Don Peters was competing in the event. Johnny Maldonado, who was a great bodybuilder from Brooklyn, New York, he was in the contest. But everybody was there to see what Arnold Schwarzenegger looked like. Everyone had heard about Arnold from Europe. He had already won the Mr. Universe twice. He was the youngest Mr. Universe winner ever at 20 years old. So now he was just coming off his second Mr. Universe win. He weighed over 250 pounds. He was massive. The crowd was shocked at how big he was. But again, Arnold didn't have a tan at all, and he wasn't cut. And a 180-pound Frank Zane beat out a 250-pound Arnold Schwarzenegger for the overall. So after this event, of course, Arnold signed a contract with Joe Weider. Then he ended up relocating from Munich, Germany, over to Venice Beach, California. Joe Weider gave him a contract, and he trained in California, and he never left. He stayed in America the rest of his life. And from that point on, Arnold just made amazing progress, and he became the greatest bodybuilder ever. But this event, the 1968 IFBB Mr. Universe Contest, was the event that really got it all started. And as I said, this took place one week after the 1968 NABBA Mr. Universe. So in the final placings, Frank Zane was in first place, Arnold was in second place, and they were followed by Johnny Maldonado, Don Peters, Pierre Vandenstein, and Roy Callender. So another historic event. So that's it. That's our report on the 1968 NABBA Mr. Universe and also the 1968 IFBB Mr. Universe. Thanks for watching another episode of Bodybuilding History. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can get more episodes of the Bodybuilding History series and check out my website at bodybuildinglegendshow.com. I'm John Hanson. I'll see you next time.